protect your eyes, please. Okay, so we're looking here at the toilet flange. We just dug up the old tiles off the floor and that was a complete, total disaster. Uh, they tiled over linoleum, over several layers of it. But here the bigger problem is there was only one screw in this toilet flange. And this is a very common problem, is idiots who build the house totally screw it up and they only put one screw in this flange when there's, you can see all of these screw holes here. There's supposed to be four screws at minimum holding this thing down so that your toilet doesn't rot. So, and the problem here is, and this happens quite a bit, is because of the size of this box out hole here, and there's just no room for them to grab any meat. And of course, somebody didn't take two seconds to cut a few pieces of wood to fix this. Here's what we're gonna do. We have pre-cut these pieces of wood that are gonna slip under here, and we're gonna screw the wood down to the subfloor, and then you'll have some meat underneath these screw holes to bite down on and now your toilet will be completely stable. I mean really, how simple is that folks? All you gotta do is cut four little pieces of wood and somebody was just too lazy to do it 30 years ago when this building was built. So we're going to correct that today and then we're going to put self-leveling compound all over this entire floor so we can tile. And we have to build a dam right around this so you don't get any stuff dumping down in these holes and you don't want to cement this down either. Okay, so now you can see we've placed our wood underneath the toilet flange here. So the cool thing about it is I've actually decreased the size of the box out opening to just underneath the neck here. So this gives us a dual support because now not only will this be nailed down but the pipe itself won't even be able to wiggle underneath. So one thing here that's pretty important to keep in mind is this is wood and we now have a possibility of eight different places to put screws now so we've opened up our choices but we got to make sure we pre-drill now so you want perfect holes in this wood so it doesn't split on you after you've already tiled over it so we're going to go through each and every one of these holes here and just pre-drill right through like this see I'm a big fan of pre-drilling because I don't like splitting wood. And that's what you do, you just go all the way around. Okay, so we are going to pour self-leveling compound here in this bathroom. This is a about a six by five foot area here. And you always want to have a strategy when you're going to self-level. You want to know where do you want the leveling cement to go and where do you not want it to go. And so this is why like in areas like down here, you see along the wall here, we're gonna put caulking all the way around, all the way around the walls there. And what this is gonna do is sort of dam up the cement so that it won't go leaking underneath the walls and you'll waste all of the product. And same here, this uh, area is here by the box out here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna put just a little bit of foam in here, a little spray foam to seal in these, these big areas here. But then I want to build a circular dam right around the toilet flange here with some caulking just to keep the, the cement from coming all the way in and getting in underneath that and just dumping down to the next unit down below. And so likewise you go all the way around the floors here uh, wherever these cracks are and you fill those up. And I always like to uh, protect my bathtub in case there's any splashes or anything. So we're going to raise this up so it'll be about maybe a half inch up off the floor so that the, the concrete will still flow underneath it, but it won't splash all over the bathtub. I'm not going to put any paper on the wall here because we're going to paint the wall. Normally you would want to put some kind of paper protection along your wall because uh, you might get a few splashes here and there. But that's it. And then we're going to vacuum this floor real good, real good vacuum. And then we're going to roll down a primer for the cement and on the wood too. And when the primer dries and is ready, we will then go ahead and pour down the self-leveling cement. Well, you can see we've added our caulking and we've built a dam around the toilet flange there. And we'll probably have to build it up a little more. I'm going to let this dry so I can pile up some more and make it a little taller because as you can see, it needs to be up higher so that the self-leveling 
cement doesn't come in there. So you can see, I put my six foot level going all the way across the bathroom here, and you can see how much gap is underneath. So when the self-leveling compound comes under there, in some areas it's gonna fill about half inch, in other areas it's going to fill about maybe a quarter of an inch. And this will all be perfectly flat by the end of today. So here we are, one final look at the bathroom before we pour down the self-leveler. Everything's ready to go. I've got my dam built up right around the toilet flange there. And we're gonna just dump it here along this edge and let it kind of work its way down over here. And it will fill in this huge cavity here and come up to about the level of that moat right there. And then the rest of it will self-level across the floor here. And when we are done, it's gonna look like a lake of water. We have two minutes to mix this stuff and we only have about a 10 to 15 minute working time so we have to move really quick. Mix it fast, dump it onto the ground real fast and you only got 10 minutes to work it around. Okay, so here's our, here's our cement here and we're gonna just start pouring it out into this corner back over here and we're gonna let it run its way down and find level. See how it just flows, just like water. And we're gonna to need to make, of course, a couple more batches of this. But I'm gonna uh, let this sort of flow into place. I'm gonna coax it and trowel it. You can see as you move it, it just, Sort of finds its way there and it automatically levels out. Okay, so here we've poured the first half a bag. We, make, we mix up 25 pounds just to see how it would look. So we're going to go ahead and pour, mix up and pour the rest of the bag. But see how it looks just like a shiny lake there as it finds its own level. some ridges like this one, this ridge right here. That's from previous thin set that wouldn't chip up. And if you look real closely there, you can see a couple of ridges. So we're gonna pour just a little bit more over this spot to get it to fill and level out perfectly. So here we've surrounded our toilet flange and just a little bit of a ridge left right there. We're gonna to try to smooth that down. And meanwhile, you can see it's sort of coaxing its way into the corner. We'll have to use the float here. But let me show you what we're gonna do. Right around here, we just gently trowel it and it will smooth right over it. And then as we come along the edge of the wall, we may need to pour just a little more unless we can coax it in there. Yeah, it's going. I'm doing this a lot slower just to show you how it works, but in reality the pros will be going real fast before this stuff sets. Well, we took a little break there. We had to run to Home Depot and pick up some more of this self-leveler. The floor was a lot deeper with the craters and stuff than we thought, so we just needed to get one more bag. So it's sort of dried a little bit and we're going to mate up the new to this. Here is what it looked like before we started doing the tile removal and here's what it looked like after we did the self-leveling. So you have a perfect subfloor now to put the tiles on which you can see we're doing here with the half inch travertine stone tile 
and I'm using my self-leveling system here with the wedges and um, the clips and this keeps it nice and flat there's no lippage between adjacent tiles and you need this completely flat surface to put your toilet on otherwise the toilet is going to wobble back and forth Well, here you can see we've finished tiling the bathroom floor here and right around the toilet flange if you look you can see how deep it is now because we had a quarter of an inch here of the self-leveling compound along with a quarter inch of cork as required by code because we are in an upstairs unit and you have to have that quarter inch soundproofing then we have about a quarter of an inch of thin set underneath and then about a half inch thick of this travertine natural stone tile so you can see we've added about an inch. So now we're way up above the original toilet flange. So what do you do? Well, I keep a lot of these rings in stock and we start stacking these rings up until you bring the level back up. Now, of course, you have to maintain this nine o'clock, three o'clock here on the holes here. And we're gonna, of course, when we go to do the toilet, we're going to make sure our screws are already in place. And we just keep stacking up and in this case here i think it takes four or five i like to come up to the point that we're above the tile so if you can see right here we're just above the level of the tile now some tiling companies will tell you oh we do this all the time and we keep it at, at level no you don't want it to be at level you always want it to be just above the level because when the toilet <clears throat> the toilet comes in you want the toilet to fit around this even though you, they claim, well, you got the wax ring, you want the toilet to fit completely around that. That's what gives you your seal. So don't buy uh, the story of anybody that says, we've been doing this for years. Well, if they've been doing it that way, it's wrong. You have to have it slightly above the level of the tile. So the toilet will fit down over this thing. And one other thing to keep in mind, too, is when you screw them all down, you got to make sure that all their holes line up because you're going to run screws right down through and through to the existing flange so they all have to line up and it's all got to be nine o'clock three o'clock otherwise your toilet's going to be crooked leave it completely like a clock like the face of a clock perfect like that <clears throat> here you can see the finished product with the water closet bolts poking up through the rings here and I've got uh, three of the four screws are into the subfloor now. And if you notice closely there, you can see I put silicon all around the inside in between each layer so it keeps any kind of leakage from getting out so that all the water goes down the drain. Here you can see we're using our flexible toilet gasket. It's a waxless seal. It's an alternative to using the wax rings. Much cleaner, much better, much easier to use. I've been using this for a couple of years now. Really like this product. So now here you can see, uh, here's what the bathroom looked like before we remodeled with the uneven Batman looking floor. And now here it is after we remodeled. Everything looks perfect and beautiful. So hope this helps you and thanks for stopping by.